Hello, Captains. It's time for another Star Trek Online Starship Review. This time, it is the Tier 6 Advanced Research Vessel Sutherland Class. Engage. Hello Star Trek and Star Trek Online fans or any fans who just want to find out about a cool starship. Welcome to my starship review. As I mentioned at the intro, this is the Tier 6 Advanced Research Vessel, the Sutherland class. This is based off of a Nebula. If you are familiar with the Nebula class in the 24th century of Star Trek, this is basically a 25th century version of that ship. Um, a retrofitted version, you could think of it that way. An updated nebula for the times. So it, it appears a little bit different, but the basic design and shape and form is a nebula. And if you are not familiar with the nebula, it's a very iconic starship in Star Trek. We've seen it quite a bit in the TV series and TNG. Uh, you will note it by its large saucer, which replicates or emulates the saucer seen on the Galaxy-class starships, like the Enterprise D. It's the same type of saucer, except it has a shortened body. It's not as long as a neck. In fact, there's no neck. It makes direct contact with the body down here, and that itself is also smaller. And the nacelles are in a different configuration. Instead of up, they are down, especially on this, this Sutherland class, this uh, Tier 6 version here. And another striking feature that makes it different is the science pod on top. If you're wondering what this thing is, it's a science pod. And from what I gather, the pod here is interchangeable with different components based on the configuration needed. Now, technically, this is a science ship. It is meant for science operations. We should say long, deep space, long-term science operations. So this ship, just like the Galaxy class, is built for very deep space voyage. It is meant to go the distance, and it's meant to be out there exploring new worlds uh, in a sciencey type of way but long term and 
I don't know if any configurations ever had families on them, which of course was an early thing in TNG on that ship. But later on, I believe the family aspect was kind of, you know, minimized. And I think at one point, finally, the families were removed from the Enterprise. I think later on, especially during the Dominion War, there would be no need for families on board the starships. But anyway, um, I could see families living on a ship like this, going out there exploring in a sciencey type of way. I just don't know for sure if that ever existed. But anyways, going back to the science pod here, it's geared to do a lot of sciencey type things. Who knows what? Probably related to the deflector dish, you know, that kind of stuff. But from what I gather, it can also be interchangeable. I think during the Dominion War might have been interchangeable. Don't quote me on this. I could be completely wrong, but interchangeable with one that was able to fire like more torpedoes or something like that, quantum torpedoes or what have you for um, different functions, which makes this ship very versatile. It definitely makes the Nebula or, in this case, the uh, advanced research vessel, the Tier Six version here, Sutherland class, a very versatile ship because it is tanky, like a Galaxy class. It is sciency. It does a lot of sciency powers. And in the game Star Trek Online, a very, very sciency ship. And it is very flexible in configuration for whatever it is needed for. It is a, a staple of Star Trek and an iconic looking ship. And uh, one that I have enjoyed flying here in Star Trek Online since I've been flying this Tier Six version here. Now, let's just take a quick look around the ship so we can look at all the parts here. Let me turn off the HUD. Can I do that? Yes, there we go. So here we have, we'll zoom in real close here and get some real close up looks. Here's the saucer. Um, I'm guessing the bridge is on top. I'm guessing that's where the bridge is. Um, so there's a saucer, pretty much galaxy class style saucer. Really nothing too different about that. I imagine there's a tin forward and all that, you know, going on in the saucer. Uh, and then the way the struts come out here is they're attached to the hull here. And they come out and down and then there's your nacelles. It's got a big deflector dish because again, this thing is geared towards science. So we have a giant deflector dish. I imagine it has very good deflective shields as well. And the shuttle bay, I'm guessing, would be right here. So it would have a shuttle bay. That would be a necessary thing to have. Not really sure what all the components are or what things are on here, but it looks really cool anyway. We've got the science pod, like I said, up here. And again, I don't know the complete function of the science pod or everything it does, but um, it just adds more functionality to the ship, I guess. It allows them to do all kinds of science experiments and, uh, like I said, is potentially interchangeable. And in Star Trek Online, this is the default texture that you get with the ship. And it looks a bit odd right now, and I think that's because the bloom or the lighting is a bit overblown in the soul system here. And you can't see the black texturing on this too well. When we get into other parts of space, we'll take another look at it because the black texturing on it is a lot darker here. Uh, and it will look a little bit different. The texture will look a little different. Right now, I think the lighting is a bit overblown here in the soul system. So it's just kind of too bright. I like the way this looks here on the bottom. So that's the overall general view of the ship. If you're wondering about the size of the ship, we'll just think a Galaxy class, but without the huge back end on it. Kind of a shrunken back end. Uh, I'm going to try to find some other ships here to compare it to. I've got no idea what ships are in, sec in soul space right now for me to compare to, but if I can find a ship to a line next to, we can kind of gauge size a little bit on this thing. It's obviously not as big as something like this sucker down here. You can see it is definitely not as big as that. There's the vengeance up there. For some reason, my colors are overblown. My lighting is overblown here, but it's only in the soul system. 
It's only right here at Earth, which is odd. So you can see a, the Vengeance, for example, from JJ Trek is definitely a lot bigger uh, than this. Which just really shows you how far off the scaling they were on ships in that in those movies. I'd like to find a galaxy class to uh, put this up against if we could because then you could really see how similar they are. I'm just going to go to a different instance real quick and maybe we can uh, just take a quick look at some other comparisons to ships just so you get an idea on the size comparison. This is not the biggest ship in the game nor is it the smallest. It's actually very easy to fly. In fact, there's another one right there. Look at that. Right beside me, another another nebula type ship. That one's that one's the Magellan maybe or that that one's a different configuration. Here's a scimitar down here. So you can see scimitar obviously bigger. I think that's an Odyssey up there. Oh, there's an Enterprise E. That would be a good comparison, too. And it actually looks bigger than the Enterprise E, which I don't know if that's actually accurate. Because, <laughs> wow, I mean, my <laughs> this ship is like dwarfing the E, at least with the saucer part of it. So I'm not sure if that's completely accurate on the scaling there. But it's not too much bigger. Or is that other ship? Did it disappear? Saw another one. Saw an Odyssey, but I guess it went away. Well, you kind of get the idea anyway. Let's uh, see what else is over here real quick. A lot of vengeance is out today. There's the Jupiter. Just trying to give you all an idea of the scale of it. It's very easy to maneuver as you can see. I'm having no trouble kind of flying around soul space here getting where I need to go. If I zoom all the way out, this is what it looks like. So that's the ship all the way zoomed out. I cannot zoom out any farther than that. So it's not a tiny ship, but you can still see it pretty good even when it's all the way zoomed out. If I zoom all the way in, that's what it looks like. I like these big impulse engines here. Look at these massive impulse engines. So that's basically the view of the ship. Let's take a look at what it's all about. We'll go into the specifications. Go to ships, tier six. Nope, tier six. And we are looking for advanced research vessels, Sutherland class. So here's some shots and you can see in these screenshots, the darker texture here, which is not really showing up for me right now while I'm in the solar system it's just so overblown but that's what it's supposed to look like all right it says a tough Federation science ship equipped with a tachyon particle field emitter allowing it to drain enemy shields and restore the shields of allies in battle the Sutherland is built to support fleet actions as well as stand tall on its own through the use of its tachyon-based tech. This starship features a Lieutenant Commander Engineering slash Temporal Operative Bridge Officer Station. The Advanced Research Vessel Tier 6 comes equipped with a Tachyon Particle Field Emitter Universal Console. Activating this console's ability will cause your starship to emit a densely packed field of tachyons around your ship in a large radius. These particles interact with the shields of foes and allies differently, 
Foes within the field right excuse me, foes within this field radius will suffer dramatic shield damage and a lingering shield hardness debuff. Allies within this field will receive a shield regeneration and a shield hardness buff. Upon expiration of this field, a final tachyon particle pulse will be emitted that will deal a more pow powerful version of the effects listed above. The console also provides a passive bonus to starship drain expertise and starship shield restoration. This console may only be equipped on the Advanced Research Vessel. After reaching level 5 in your Advanced Research Vessel Starship Mastery, you will unlock the Tachyon Dispersal Starship trait. While Tachyon Beam is active on a target, it will also significantly reduce the target's shield hardness. In addition, if Tachyon Beam reaches its full duration, it will release a large burst of Tachyon energy that will inflict shield damage over time and reduce the shield hardness of affected targets within its radius. So just imagine this Starship trait, the Tachyon Beam, in combination with this Tachyon Field Emitter. You are just draining the shields immensely on your enemy, drain, lessening their hardness and draining their shields, and you can take down enemies quite quickly once you bring down their shields with both of these abilities enabled at once. So it's very cool to use them in combination. So as you can see, this ship is all about drain. You want drain, drain, drain. You're going to drain your enemy dry. So that's what you want to build for on this ship. You need a tachyon beam to utilize the starship mastery trait. And of course, the, the Starship Field Emitter is also going to be based on Drain Expertise and all of that. So Drain, Drain, Drain is the name of the game. So we get uh, to use this ship at Vice Admiral. It's got a hull strength of 1.05. That's not right, obviously. That's a bug there. I don't know what the hull strength, the default hull strength on it is. The shield modifier is 1.3. We'll see what it is when I look it up in my specs. I'm not sure what the default hull strength is, but that's obviously a bug. Shield modifier is 1.3. Four weapons is three. Aft weapons is three. Remember, it's a science ship. Even though it's a little more tanky and a little more capable, it's still a science ship, so you're only going to get three four weapons and three aft. Three device slots. You get one lieutenant tactical, one lieutenant commander engineering, uh, slash temporal operative, so you can have a temporal operative powers on here. One ensign science, and, one, and of course, one commander science. That way, you get your full tier three science abilities, and one lieutenant commander universal, which makes it very flexible. You have two tactical console modification slots, so this thing is really not about doing a whole lot of energy damage. It has three engineering and five science. So this ship is all about using your science abilities to the max because it's really not geared to do a ton of like flat out energy damage. Base turn rate is 10 degrees per second. It can be a, a little slow turning without some buffs. I am using the pilot specialization, which gives me a plus 40% turning rate buff and that definitely helps. Impulse modifier is 0.15, inertia 45. It does give plus 15 to aux power and plus five to shield. Remember, aux power is gonna be very important on a ship like this with your science powers, so that goes hand in hand. You get the tachyon particle field emitter, sensor analysis, a secondary deflector, because we're a science ship, subsystem targeting, and you get the science vestal mastery package. That is enhanced particle generators for more exotic damage, advanced shield systems for shield H HP, enhanced restorative circuitry for healing, reactive shield technology for a shield regen and hardness, and then the tachyon dispersal, which is the starship trait. So that's what you can expect on this ship. It is geared for, for science, but it's like a tanky science. It's a capable science. It's not a useless science, <laughs> which is really cool. I'm going to fly out of here a bit because it's a bit noisy around there. And next, I'm going to bring up my build on this ship and all the specifications and all that since we're in space here. Now, naturally, I have to mention that while I bring up my build, this video is not about the build. That is not the point of this video. That is not the point at all. The point of this video is to review this ship 
and its native capabilities and to show it to you in combat and to give you some ideas about how it works and what its powers do like the tachyon field emitter and the starship trait so that you can decide if you would like to purchase this ship or not that's the whole goal here so i will bring up my build and i do recognize that my build may not be perfect and that you can definitely design your build in different ways and i'd never claim that my build is the best build for this ship it is simply a build i am using and it works for me could it be better absolutely but again that's not the point okay so here we go bring it up right now this is my build and what i am using on this ship because i find successful for me on my science character on most ships that i fly i fly all science ships on this character this is my science character. He is my main character called the Doctor, who is a science character. I am using the uh, Temporal Defense Initiative stuff, reputation. Everything from the Temporal Defense Initiative reputation. The complete space set, including the weapon set and the uh, space set itself. So everything from the Temporal Defense Initiative is what I am using, which actually makes sense because this ship does have a temporal operative bridge officer seating. So that's another way to get some interesting powers on this ship. And I actually do have some interesting powers. For example, I got subspace vortex three, very cool thing, which combined that with gravity well and like was really neat. Okay, let's look at the base stats of my ship right now before we go ever over everything, just so you know where I'm sitting at. My stealth detection rating is 109.29. Power transfer rate is at 243.35%. Defense rating is 45. And here's my hull strength, 60,748. So it is not the highest hull strength. But what makes up for that is the shield strength on this thing. I've got a 25,368 shield strength. My hull repair rate is 53.2% a minute. Shield regen is 1325. My resists are around 36% on everything. Accuracy rating is 35.1. Crit severity is 74.8%. And my crit chance of hitting a severity is 13.5. So, excuse me, so my crit chance is a little bit high there, above 10%, which I like. That way I can get more crits. And then my turn rate with the buffs I'm using is 20.2. So we've basically doubled the turn rate on this ship and um, to do that I am using the pilot specialization which when maxed out will give you a 40 percent improvement to turn rate so that's good so those are my basic stats that's where I'm sitting at right now the masteries of course we went over that already but just to, to show you again is, is plus 15 percent damage to exotic damage abilities plus 10% shield hit points, improves hull healing and shield healing by 10%, and a shield regeneration buff. And then of course the tachyon dispersal trait, which uh, will basically, to the foe, it will remove shield, it will drain shield and reduce their shield resistance or hardness. Now, that only works while the tachyon beam is active. So, in order to use tachyon dispersal, you need to have the tachyon beam bridge officer power on your ship. And here you can see I have it. It doesn't matter if you have one, two, or three, as long as you have at least one of it, at least tier one, then you get that tachyon beam dispersal thing as part of it. So, as you can see, it's part of it. While tachyon beam is channeled, it's doing all, all, look at all the stuff it's doing. I'm even doing electrical damage every one second for 10 seconds. I've got something called drain infection, which is going doing electrical damage when I hit the tachyon beam. So this tachyon beam is doubly useful. Well, triply useful for me because I'm getting the traits abilities. I'm getting the natural abilities of tachyon beam and I'm getting that drain infection, with, which is electrical damage as well. So that tachyon beam is very powerful, 
power that I have on this ship. So when I buff the power for it using red matter or something else to buff my ox power really high, it really helps my tachyon beam ability. So I can drain shields on a ship and lessen their hardness and, and do electrical damage at the same time uh, really good. So that's an important part of the ship. It all goes hand in hand together. So that is a power you want. Uh, next would be the actual console itself, which is this thing here. This is called the tachyon particle field emitter. Now just having this on your ship will improve shield regeneration and drain expertise and drain expertise is going to be extremely important with these abilities. So as you can see, it's a shield drain minus shield hardness to the enemy and then to the foe, it basically does the opposite. I mean to the uh, to your ally, it basically does the opposite. So to the foe, it's going to hurt them. To the ally, it's going to help them. Now, here's the problem with it. It's only a three kilometer radius. So it is a very narrow field that both the foe and the enemy has to be inside. That's why this is a good support ability. If you have a lot of, let's say, escorts inside this field doing damage to the enemy, you can enable this feature, which will hurt the enemy, but it will buff those escorts, which definitely need help. So this can be a very good support thing but if you are on your own, it's going to help you anyway, because it's going to hurt the enemy. But they, they do have to be within three kilometers. If they're outside of that field, it doesn't help. So that is a very small window they have to be inside. At least with the tachyon beam, they don't have to be within that distance. But with this ability, they got to be really close. So you need to be really close to them to utilize this thing. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. And that really is the downside of this ability is just the distance that it works at it's um it's just it's very narrow it is also part of a set called the tachyon manipulation technology if you have the detection grid you get a set two bonus with this and that set two bonus is an accuracy improvement rating and more starship expertise drain expertise plus 35.5 so if, you, if I just had this other thing, Tachyon Detection Grid, I would have a massive Starship Drain expertise. I'm not actually sure where you get that. I think it's the Tier 5 Nebula. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it might be the Tier 5 Nebula where you get the Tachyon Detection Grid. I think so. I, it's been a long time since I flew the Tier 5 Nebula, and I have flown it. It's just been a very long time. I forget everything it comes with. But that may be what where you get that. And then you put them together, and then you would have that set two bonus. Now, where is that on my hot bar? It's right here. Tachyon particle field. Affects anything alive, blah, 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 foes, allies. I also get a drain infection on it, which is electrical damage that's coming from a different thing that I have. I'm not actually sure where it's coming from. It's coming from a different thing. I just don't know what thing it's coming from. Might be a skill trait I have enabled. But let me enable the um, thing for you. Let me zoom all the way out so you can kind of see what the field looks like. And let's enable it. And you can see what this looks like. Ship is under attack. Very violent. <laughs> A lot of stuff going on there. But you can see the radius that the ships have to be inside. And that is the final burst at the end of it. So you can see that it's a very narrow field they need to be within for that to work. And it's a very, very messy effect. It's actually hard to see sometimes what you're firing at or where the enemy is when you uh, enable the ability because it is very violent like that. So the graphics are just everywhere on it. But as you can see, it's got that narrow field they have to be inside. So you can watch for that. You can zoom out like this and then enable it. And then you can see where the enemy needs to be inside it. And that's it. That's the effect. you got a two-minute cooldown on it. That's the special ability. And of course, the tachyon beam will work up to any fire distance. So that one you don't have to worry about. So those are the two native abilities of the ship. That's what makes this ship unique compared to other ships. Those two abilities there. Now, just going over my 
other equipment real quick so that you know what I'm using when we go into battle. Like I said, it's all temporal uh, defense initiative stuff. I've got the uh, anti-proton dual beam bank. Um, I've got advanced temporal defense chroniton beam, uh, chroniton torpedo launcher, uh, defense initiative deflector. Here's my secondary deflector, which is a strategic inhibiting secondary deflector. And there's all the stats on it. You can pause and look at it, but there's all the stats on the secondary deflector. And I got this from the uh, fleet research facility. This is the Temporal Defense Initiative Combat Impulse Engine. Here's the Warp Drive. Here's the uh, Temporal Defense Initiative Regenerative Shield. Uh, now in the back, in the aft, I do have three 360 degree beams. It's all anti-proton. Got the omnidirectional anti-proton and the other ones, because you can have both there, one crafted, one from the mission. And then the kinetic cutting beam. That way I can fire forward on this ship and all of my weapons, the three in the aft and the three in the four, will all fire at my enemy just by firing forward. So I like that. Um, I've got a Trellium D plating on there. I've got Xenotech power flow module, um, the Borg module. I do have a uh, plasmonic leech, even though they're useless today. I still have one on here, so might as well just keep it. I got an exotic particle field exciter which is very cool. I like that one. Uh, I got the Temporal Disentanglement Suite. That helps me with critical chance and severity and aux power and shield capacity. Uh, I've got a Chroniton Drive Actuator. That's part of the Temporal Defense Initiative stuff. And then, of course, in the TAC consoles, I've got Vulnerability Locators, which is chance, critical chance with anti-proton damage. That's my basic build. Now, stations, of course. We mentioned that this does have a temporal operative seating. You can have engineering here, or a temporal operative. Now I'm not using any temporal operative powers right now, but you could. So that gives it a little more flexibility. I've just got engineering powers right now, directed energy modulation two, engineering team two, and emergency power weapons one. I am using my universal slot that it comes with, my tactical universal, to give me more tactical powers. Even though this is not a tactically inclined ship, I like to use a lot of tactical powers. Um, so I do have you know, torpedo spread, high yield. Uh, actually, I have two high yields. I probably need to change that out, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. I got high yield three, so that's the important part. And I got spread two, and I got overload two, and then tack team one. Um, I do have a tractor beam here to fill out my ensign science. And then for the good one here, the commander level, I got gravity well level three and something new that I'm using that I did have not used before, but I decided to put it on this ship. I got subspace vortex three. So this is level three. This is the highest, highest level of this. It creates a subspace vortex for 22nd, which causes kinetic damage and it ignores shields. Activate again to teleport to the Vortex's location facing your current direction. Uh, there you go. It does kinetic damage. It's kind of like it's kind of like Gravity Well, but it's just a different ability. So I like using them in combination because when you hit Gravity Well and you hit Vortex, the enemy's gone. <laughs> Science Team 2 and, of course, to use the Starship trait, Tachyon Beam. This ship is all about drain. So that's my basic bridge officer setup. Naturally, you can, you know, do different based on whatever powers you're using or whatever space set you're using. Note that because I'm using the temporal defense initiative stuff, I also have some sciency type powers. Looks like somebody's coming to say hello. Um, I have, of course, the anti-time entanglement singularity, which is an active power of my traits, I believe. Yes, it is an active reputation trait, anti-time anti -time entanglement singularity. So anybody can have that. That's just part of uh, that, that, that set. Um, I also have temporal fracture. Again, that is part of the temporal defense initiative stuff. So you have all that on here. And here's what it does. It does physical damage. It does shield penetration. It does a lot of stuff here. So I have that. And then I have this one here, which is temporal threading. It, my, it says your weapons gain plus 25 armor penetration and 25% shield penetration for 15 seconds. Again, that's part of the Temporal Defense Initiative armaments. So if you have the entire Temporal Defense Initiative reputation like I do, you will have 
these three powers. You just have to slot them and all that, but you'll have those three powers. And of course, here's the one that's unique to the ship, Tachyon Particle Field. And then of course, the Starship Trait, which is part of Tachyon Beam 1. Here's my Vortex. Here's my Gravity Well. Here's Teleport, because with the our Trajector Jump, because with the, um, let me just turn around real quick. With the um, Temporal Defense Initiative Warp Core, you get Trajector Jump, which allows you to teleport forward. And what else do I have? That's basically it. Everything else is just based on my general science abilities, of course. I've got Photonic Fleet and all that. Barely even use Photonic Fleet these days. Used to use it a long time ago a lot, but really don't use it much anymore. Um, and just to show you where my specializations are, I am using Temporal Operative as primary specialization. Temporal Operative is maxed out. And I'm using Pilot as secondary. And the reason why I like that is this plus 40% turn rate buff. And that way I don't have to have an RCS in the engineering slot. I can save an engineering slot for something else and just use Pilot to buff the turn rate. So that really comes in handy. And you can see with that turn rate buff, again, I'm doubled the turn rate, the default turn rate on this ship. That is how fast the ship turns. Which, since I have three 360 degree beams in the aft, works perfectly fine. I really don't need any more than that. So that works out great. So that turn rate is good enough for me on this ship. I accept that it is similar to a galaxy, and so the turn rate's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be an escort or something like that. It's good enough. It works. Gets me where I'm going. Let us look at my DPSs real quick before we go into combat. Uh, wrong thing. We're going to do a uh, rearrange HUD. Show this. Just to show you what my DPSs are and everything, this is the anti-proton dual beam bank. I'm sitting at 1487 DPS on it with nothing buffed. 1858 anti-proton damage. On the single beam, it's 1232 DPS and then 1540 anti-proton. In the back, it's 1027 DPS and 1283 anti-proton on that one. This one is 1167 DPS and 1458 anti-proton. And then the kinetic cutting beam is 1589 DPS and 2119 kinetic damage. And the torpedo is almost 800 DPS and almost 8000 kinetic damage. Of course, when I buff that, like emergency power to weapons, those numbers will go up. 1623 on DPS, 2000 anti-proton, 1345, etc., etc. So the more power I give to weapon systems, obviously DPS is going to go up. Or any other buffs that I have, temporal threading... Will also improve my armor penetration and shield penetration as well. So that's another buff if I enable, you know, those two things together. I'm going to be doing a pretty good amount of damage. So that's where my damage levels are, just so you know where I'm at. Now, next thing. This ship does not have a unique bridge. Sorry, it just doesn't. But what you can do is what I like to do on it, and I like to put the Enterprise Bridge. Let's go to uh, visit Starship Bridge. I like to use the new Galaxy Bridge that you can buy. And here it is. I had it purchased, of course, and I put it on this ship. And now when I beam aboard, it's like classic TNG, which makes sense considering the saucer is like a Galaxy-class saucer. I imagine this is what it would be like on a nebula, maybe colored a little different, but a similar layout nonetheless. So you have that classic TNG bridge on here. Again, this doesn't come with it. I had to purchase this bridge. You know, it's a separate purchase. And then you have you can have that on the ship. The default bridge is just a default bridge. So again, it doesn't come with a unique bridge. Let us also go down to Earth Space Dock because I want to show you how you can customize this ship with different textures and parts and stuff. And then after that, we will go into combat. That should be fun. So let's zoom over here to ESD.
And we will run down here to ship customizations. Customize ship, customize starship. So here is the default view, and here you can better see the dark textures I was talking about. It's hard to see in the solar system because it's overblown with light. But here is what the texture is supposed to look like, and it is the Type 7 material. But that's what the ship's supposed to look like, so I don't know why it looks funky in the solar system, but... The lighting is really weird there, but this is what the texture is supposed to look like. Now, if you own other variants, you can select different templates. For example, you've got the Magellan template, which looks like that. You have the classic nebula, so here's what a classic nebula looks like. So that should look very familiar to you. You can see how that is inspired from the galaxy class for sure. The nacelles are the same and all that. And then uh, the Venture class, which is like a retrofitted, that the, the Venture is really the retrofitted nebula. It's like the upgrade to the nebula, which is more curvy, and it's got a cool texture on it. And then the Sutherland is really like the refit. It's like the, it's like the new version of it. And you can see that the um, the nacelles are swept back on it. For example, the nebula. The nacelles are like right under the saucer. I mean, look at that, right underneath the saucer. If your window is here, you don't have a very good view. <laughs> You're just going to be staring at the nacelle. But in the Sutherland, they are swept back. So that's very uh, unique there. Gives it, uh, gives it a more of a, a racy, kind of racing appearance. Just a um, slicker, faster appearance. It's more swept forward, and this is swept forward like here. I love that. I love the way the uh, deflector is there, too. Then that mission pod, it's, it's huge, too. Boy, it's bigger on the Sutherland. It is definitely bigger. Now, here's the uh, interior. I'm using the Galaxy 2368 interior. Again, doesn't come with the ship, but you can get it separately. Type 3 windows is what it uses by default, and you can select different window types if you want. Not a big deal there. Here's all the materials. Type 7 is the default material for this thing. But here's what it would look like with different textures on it. You can, of course, put a pattern on it. You can change the pattern and change the pattern color. And if you have the different parts purchased, you can mix and match things. So, for example, the mission pod up on top. Um, you can change it to all of these different types of mission pods. So the Sutherland does actually have a different variation. So see, here's Sutherland Beta. That's the default mission pod that it comes with. But you can change it to just the Sutherland mission pod, and it's now a, this round, this round thing which I'm guessing are torpedoes. I mean, it looks like a torpedo launcher. It really does. So that could be a torpedo launcher right there. Or it could just be something different. I don't know, but it looks like that. Anyway, it just gives you a different style you could put there. And you can, if you have the other ships, if you have the Venture, you could use it. Magellan, Phoenix. Nebula, so you can use different mission pods. Unfortunately, you can't turn it off though. You are stuck with a mission pod. I think this ship would look really cool without the mission pod. I kind of want to see this ship without the mission pod and without the little fin sticking up here. I'd love to see a, a version like that. I think it would look real slick. It'd be like a faster, slick racing galaxy class. Here's the hull. and what it would look like with different holes on it. The saucer, of course. Nebula saucer, Magellan, just slightly different variations of the saucer and how they're set back to on the on the base here. Uh, pylons, of course, is going to be how the nacelles are set. 
Here's the nebula, which sweeps them forward. Magellan, which turns them on their side, actually. Venture, and then Sutherland. That can really change the look of it. The center pylon, you can actually change the little fin that the uh, pod is on. So the Sutherland looks like that, swept forward. Here's what the nebula looks like, very similar to the uh, Sutherland. The Phoenix is way different. That's real crazy. The Magellan looks like that, and the Venture looks like that. And then, of course, the nacelles themselves. There's the Nebula nacelles, Magellan, Venture, and Sutherland. And that's all. You cannot change the sensor arrays or anything else there. You can add a pattern to it, but you can't change the style. So that is what you can do with customizations. It actually is very customizable, especially if you own all the other variants. You can customize the look of it quite a bit, which is very cool. Very cool. So that is going to um, conclude our specifications or our look at all the specifications on the ship. For the next part of the video, we are now going to go into combat. I'm going to take this thing into various combat. I don't know what I'm going to do. This isn't planned. I think I'm just going to do the normal stuff that, you know, that um, that you normally would do because there's no uh, events going on right now. There's the first contact day event going on right now, but uh, that is a ground thing, not a space thing. So what I'll do is just do some red alerts and maybe a patrol and uh, maybe infected conduit. And uh, just some normal stuff like that, just so you can see the ship in combat and allow me to demonstrate the abilities to you. And in fact, the first thing I'm going to do is go to a patrol so that I can isolate the abilities for you. I want to show you how the tachyon beam works, and I want to show you how the um, emitter, the tachyon emitter works. That way you can see the two native abilities of the ship first and what, it's cap what, it's, what, it is, what makes it unique. And then after that, we will just go into combat and you can just see it all at once. So if you will stand by, I will shift to a patrol. I'm going to pause the video and get a patrol going and we can demonstrate those features for you. Stand by. Hello, captains. We are back. It's time to get into combat with this ship. The Advanced Research Vessel Tier 6 Sutherland Class. We are now going to engage in combat. If you skipped ahead to this point, well, you missed all the specs on it, but you can, of course, go back and watch them. But here we go. We're going to go into this, and for this first system, we are at Karaya. And the point of this is to demonstrate the native abilities of this ship. So the first thing I'm actually going to demonstrate is the tachyon beam. Remember, the starship trait on this ship is dialed into that tachyon beam. You have to use the tachyon beam to get that, uh, what's it called? I just forgot the name of it. It's called the tachyon dispersal. So what that's going to do is it's going to decrease the shields on the enemy and their hardness. And if it goes its full extent, it will release a large burst at the end which is actually an AOE effect, I believe. So we're going to do that one first, and then uh, I may come out and come back in and do again the other one, the Tachyon Particle Field, because I want to do this on the Dideridex. If I'm correct, this is the patrol that has the Romulan Dideridex in it, and that's a good, that's a good ship to test these abilities on. So that's all. We're not going to do a lot of combat here. We're not going to do the whole patrol. I'm just in here to show you how these abilities work because that's what's unique about this ship and that will determine if you want to buy it or not. So let's go. Yes, I'm in the right place. I will go ahead and do a tactical team just so my shields don't go down on Looks a certain... Looks like you could use some help. Oh, the Enterprise showed up. I don't want it there. Oh well. Let's go ahead and do Tachyon Beam. Here we go. Bam. There's the effect. You can see what it's doing on the ship. There is the explosion. 
because it ran its full force. Look at all that damage it's doing. And of course, it did bring down their shields, so now I could take them out. Of course, I'm dying now, but that's beside the point. Let's get out of here. I can't get out of here fast enough. Okay, there you go. So you saw the ability there. I hit the tachyon beam. It had this neat effect on the ship. It drained its shields and the hardness. And then at the end, it expired and it blew out and it affected all the other ships. That's what I wanted you to see. That's how it works. So that's a very powerful feature because that will, um, that will really help you take down enemies very quickly. Of course, if I were actually firing on the enemy... Uh, at the same time, I would take it down very quickly. But uh, now I want to demonstrate the other ability, which is the Tachyon Particle Field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually pop out, pop back out of here. And we're going to pop back in so it resets. And we're going to do the other ability now on the Dideridex. Now remember, with it, uh, the key factor here is you need to be within three kilometers for it to work. So we got to be pretty close. I'm going to zoom out all the way so you can see everything, but we have to be very close. So I'm going to come right up next to the ship and then I'm going to enable it and you can see what that looks like. Kind of want to wait for my health to get there. I guess I can go back in now and hit um, engineering team two. So we'll go ahead and heal myself up there. Do that again. All right, I'm going to come right up next to it. There we go. Ah, crap. It, uh, I died. <laughs> so let me explain. Let me, let me, let me get out of here. That was a mistake. Okay, that was pointless. That was pointless. All right, let me explain. Um, because of my temporal operative powers, I have this ability called continuity because of my specialization, where if you die, you actually don't die. It like rewinds time and you're still alive. So that's what happened there is I actually died and then time rewound and I was alive again, but only briefly, <laughs> obviously. So that did not work like I wanted it to. That was a complete fail. Congratulations me. Let's try this again. I don't know why I'm dying so fast here. Oh, I know why. I'm in advanced difficulty, I think. No, I'm not in advanced difficulty. Thought I was. Oh no, maybe I am. Tell you what, I'm gonna switch back real quick because I'm dying too quick right now. I'm switching back to normal difficulty. I was in advance. Uh, so I'm going back to normal difficulty just for this demonstration so that I can show you without dying immediately and now I've got whole stress and I don't have any way to heal my whole stress okay well that's just gonna be there then I'll heal it before we go into combat let's go in here and try this again I'm gonna zoom all the way out First, that's the first thing I'm going to do. Oh, it's on cooldown. Jeez, I'm stupid. Ah, I can't do anything right today, guys. Let's wait for it to cool down. Nothing I can do. And I think what I'll do is I'll cloak. I'll use my science ability or quantum singularity manipulation to cloak. That way I uh, won't be fired upon immediately. All right, let's get real close and fire. That's what I'm looking at. So there's the ability. It's doing its thing. And then it'll expire. See, it's not affecting that ship. That ship was too far away. But it did affect that. Look at the shields are gone on that ship.
So what you saw there is that it did work on the Dideridex because I was very close to it. But the Mogai was just a little bit farther out from where it needed to be to affect it. So you really have to be right up on the enemy for that one to work. And then at the end it expires and does a large burst. But again, with only, only within three kilometers. So, um, yeah, that's the downside is you've got to be real close to use it. But it is effective when it's used. Now, if I were to use that plus Tachyon Beam at the same time, I would love to demonstrate that. I'm going to have to wait for that to cool down. So I have an idea, folks. While we're waiting for that to cool down, let's go heal my energy. My energy. My... My, uh... My injuries. Let's heal my injuries. And then we will go back and try both of the abilities at the same time. I want to use the emitter ability and the tachyon beam at the same time and show you what that looks like. Because that's the ultimate combo there. But I want to get rid of this whole stress. So let's just go here and take a quick detour and heal ourselves. Repair my ship. Whole stress gone. No dokie. Now we're good to go again. I forgot I was in advanced difficulty, and that does that is more stressful. I have been playing in advanced difficulty, so that is definitely harder on the ship, harder on gameplay. Harder on everything. But it's a lot more fun, especially when you are a powerful character. Let's go back to Kariah. Where are you, Kariah? You are here. And everything will be cooled down and ready to go again. Let it get lined up and we'll go to slipstream. So the uh, two tachyon features are very powerful, even by themselves, but used in conjunction, very powerful. It's just that the one that is the emitter, it's just a very narrow field. And I find that with a lot of powers sometimes on these starships is the power is pretty cool but they limit you quite a bit by the narrow field that the foe has to be within, or the ally. And that really limits its use because you've got to be right up on them. You can't hang back like I like to do. I like to hang back in a ship like this, but you can't do that. If you want to use the feature, you've got to be right up in their face. And that's not a play style that everyone likes to do, so it's hard to do that sometimes. But if it's a big enemy, like a big, a big guy, I suppose you could do that. Okay, we're back at Kariya and everything's ready to go. So here we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get within three kilometers again of the ship. I'm going to fire off the emitter and the tachyon beam at the same time. And you will see their shields just disappear. Just instantly the shields will be gone. It's actually pretty cool. One good torpedo hit and they'd be gone. So it's a very, very powerful combo. When done right. Alright, let's do this. Won't be able to cloak again, but oh well. Gotta get real close to him. There we go. Look at that. Crazy, huh? 
got the Mo guy a little bit. And of course, if I were to attack the ship, it would be gone. It would just be gone. I mean, that was those two powers alone. You know what I mean? That shows you how cool that power is. Or both of those powers together. Okay, so that gives you a demonstration of how the tachyon emitter and the tachyon beam starship traits work. Now it's time to actually take this thing into combat and show you everything all together, right? So let's do that. I'm going to get out of this patrol and we're going to do something a little more difficult. I'm going to go back into advanced difficulty just to show you the ship has what it takes. I'm going to play an advanced difficulty for this one. So this is not normal. We're going to options here. Here's advanced difficulty. There we go. We're in advanced difficulty. And I'm going to go... Ooh, I can't transwarp because I just used it. I was going to go to Argaya. Arga, Argala? Argala. I have to, I have to go the old-fashioned way. And so when I go to this patrol, Argala, it will be an advanced difficulty. So it'll be di more difficult than you're used to at the default normal difficulty. But it will give this ship a real challenge. And it will show you that um, this ship is capable even at a higher difficulty level. Here we go. Hold on to your butts. First two are taken care of. I'll use the subspace vortex, it's pretty cool. There it is. Remember, it is more difficult on advance. Ah. 
Ah, my thing came in handy there. Saved me from dying. jammed my sensors. The erosion are pretty tough, and on advanced difficulty, remember, it's, uh, it is a lot tougher. If I played this on normal, I'd be blowing through everything real easy, but on advanced, it's harder. But I wanted a challenge, because I wanted to show you what this ship can be in a challenge. You do have to watch the health a bit, but that's just how I have my build. They're so annoying. more group left. One more group. My health isn't too great, but we're going in anyway. We are going in anyway. I want to take out... Oh, uh, well, let's just do this. Let's do... Draw them all into that. Get my health go away. Got the flagship. Ooh boy. That was rough, but a lot of fun. Yeah, on advanced difficulty. Quite a challenge. But there you go. Managed to do it. Used everything I got. Didn't even have to pull out Photonic Fleet. Remember, I still had Photonic Fleet and Nimbus and Delta Alliance and fleet support that could have helped me and if I was smart I should have pulled out my photonic fleet but I just wanted to show you how it, how it can work just with the ship alone all by its lonesome and there you go it can do it of course we're not done yet let's get out of here and do something else let's do a an STL let's pug infected conduit Everybody does it. Everybody needs it. You need your Omega Marks. Yada, yada, yada. Let's do it. All my stuff is not cooled down yet. 
Um, especially in Entanglement Singularity. That's going to take four minutes, but I'm not going to wait. Let's just do it anyway. Infected the conduit, and we're going to do advanced, of course. Pug, and go. Hopefully this will go soon. <laughs> This ship is very cool. I have been playing it for a, using it for a very long time now, and I've played several of the new featured episode series that have come out recently, and uh, all the in-game content with this thing, and any special events that have come out. And it's a capable ship. It's a very fun and good science vessel. I have enjoyed it as a science vessel. If I wanted to fly an iconic Star Trek ship, in this game as a science vessel in-game ship I could see myself with this ship long term so that is a good sign because I like it <laughs> I could hate it I don't I like it it's been good for me on this character although I, I am itching and scratching to get another ship in <laughs> I just can't wait to try out another ship because you know me my goal in this game is to try and play every single ship that exists. That's my goal. One day I'll get there when I'm old and dead. But that would be my goal. Would be to play and, tr and try and review every single ship in this game. Boy, I'd love that. I don't know what my next science ship is going to be. Uh, but I definitely uh, will figure something out i got to see if there's any ships I've missed that I have in inventory that I haven't reviewed yet. And if I don't have any, then I guess I'll get a new one. So this is Infected the Conduit, in ad Advanced, in a pug, so you know this could go terrible. We'll see what happens. And all my stuff is not cooled down yet. Most of it is. Actually, this is going, this is going swimmingly well. Wait a minute, why are those out? Oh, I know why. Never mind, I thought someone had gone to the other side, but no, they didn't.
is going really well. Look at that, bringing that sucker down. Well that, my friends, <laughs> that's how you play that STF. That is how you play that. Yeah, amazing. That was a very good run there for a pug, for sure. And just shows you, you throw all the capabilities, capabilities of this ship together at once, and um, you can really do a lot of damage. Even though I'm not doing a lot of energy damage, uh, I am doing a lot of sciency damage. That's good stuff. That was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that. And warp out. Slowly, I guess. <laughs> that was a good run. That was awesome. What else can we do? Well, I already did Borg, so I don't really need to do a Borg red alert, do I? Because, I mean, it's just repetitive at that point. How about... Let us do a Tholian. Actually, let us do a Zenkethi Red Alert. See if that goes. We'll see which one goes first. That or that. One of those will go first. And then I think I might do a Crystalline Entity at the end. Who knows? But I think you guys get the idea. I'm just now, now I'm just having fun. Now I'm just playing for myself because I'm having fun. That's what's happening right now. Now you can see that black texture better here in the sector space. See how that looks on the ship? That texture looks much better here than in the soul system. Jeez, both are taking a long time. Nope, got the uh, Tholian one. We got something. What will it be? Let's find out. Where are we headed? Let's see. We are going to Tholian. Okay. We, we will do that then. Graphics are messing up, creating squares in space. 
is so it's so powerful it's making square anomalies. And everything is gone. Just like that. Oh boy, I think you guys get the idea, hopefully. Let's do one more thing, because I am thorough. I want to do Crystalline Entity Event, and none of my stuff is ready to go but I'm gonna do it anyway crystalline entity catastrophe advanced go yeehaw while that's going on oh we're way over here I wanna head back to earth earth welcome to earth could just transwarp there Yes, go. There we go, crystalline entity. This will be the last test here. It's on advanced and it's gonna go in. Can't handle it. <laughs> well, that's doing no good. But anyway, I did the other things. And gone. I hate it when you get into the crystalline divinity in entity and it's like already in progress. Anyway, I still came in second place. Still came in second place there, even though it was already in progress. So that's impressive. And I did a run earlier where I did come in first place on this. So just shows powerful ship. That was really fast. That took like a second. And we're done. I mean, that was just fast. I remember when this thing used to be difficult. Well, I think that's it for combat because there's nothing else for me to show you. The ship is powerful. The ship is good. It's a good science ship. Got a lot of flexibility. Remember, it's got temporal operative powers that I'm not even using. It has a temporal operative bridge officer seat. So there's more powers right there that you could have bridge officer powers that I'm not even using. But you could have. So it's a very capable starship. Flexible in the bridge officer seating. It, of course, it's not going to do the most energy damage. It does. It only has two tactical consoles, but 
what you have to gear this thing for is drain expertise, drain, 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 use the tachyon beam, use the um, other thingy, the uh, tachyon emitter, use all those abilities and drain your enemy and ox power and science your way through it. And that's going to do it. <laughs> science your way through it. That's the way to do it. It's a good ship. Um, when I purchased this ship and I got it, I didn't know if I would like it or not. I knew I did like the Tier 5 Nebula, and I liked the Nebula in itself. I didn't know if I was going to like love this ship or not. And after using it for so long, I love this ship. I could see myself using it as an in-game permanent ship. Therefore, it's a good ship. And so that is my review of the Advanced Research Vessel Tier 6 Sutherland Class in Star Trek Online. Drop me a line in the comments. Let me know what you think of the review. Let me know what you think of this starship. Let me know if you have purchased one and what you think of it using it. And let me know if you plan to purchase it in the future after watching this video. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.